For more on the significance of this, I'm joined by Akili West. He served on this on several diversity panels and appeared as a commentator on race relations for several media organizations. Mr. West, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, Susan. We were just looking at that video and saying, what a shot. That's certainly significant right there. The first U.S. president to be black standing on that bridge right there. Do you think that the proper amount of respect and recognition has been given to these three marches? Um, well, thanks again for having me, Susan. And I do, I do think that um, commemorating the Bloody Sunday March um, in Selma today is a good step forward. Uh, I think that, that we should commemorate these marches more. I think that we should embrace the opportunity, no matter what side of the political spectrum that you're on, um, to embrace this, because it, is a pivotal, it was a pivotal point in our nation's history, in America's history. It sure was. Um, here in the United States, a lot of play has been given to the fact that not many members of the Republican Party actually went to the commemoration ceremony today. Um, what kind of message does this send? Well, let me just say that while there may not have been many members of the Republican Party, there were many Republicans there. Now, talking about the Republican Party, I think you bring up a good, very good point. The, part, the Republican Party has a problem with reaching out to African Americans and minorities. And here was an excellent opportunity for them to do so, for them to embrace the history um, in Selma, and then also the history of the Republican Party. Uh, it was a Republican president which freed enslaved Africans here in America. It was a Republican senator, Senator Brooke um, from Massachusetts, who basically championed the Voting Rights Act in the Senate and made sure that it got pushed through Congress. Well, so where is the breakdown then at today? We saw uh, former President George Bush was there. Um, a, a couple of other high-ranking uh, Republicans decided to go at the last minute. Where is the breakdown? Well, Susan, I think that the Republican Party today, just like the Democratic Party, is somewhat schizophrenic. Um, the Republican Party are probably a little bit more so with the, with the Tea Party and that type of thing. Um, but I think where the breakdown is, is an understanding, well, first of all, how much of an impact this had on America and how many Americans were impacted by it and feel strongly about it. Um, I'm not talking just black Americans. The civil rights movement would not have been successful were it not for the coming together of all Americans, blacks and whites. Leading into this, I was just reading a story about another black teen shot in America. This happened in the U.S. state of Wisconsin. There were other high profile shootings. I could go through the list of them. Mm. Do you believe that these are random acts of violence, or do you believe that there is a real problem here in America? I believe that uh, we can't paint them all with a broad brush. Uh, first of all, we need to acknowledge the police and, and the role that they play in our society um, in keeping people safe. We also need to acknowledge the justice system, and there needs to be equal justice under the law for everyone. I think what the police shootings bring up is whether there is equal justice under the law or whether there is this pro profiling and these other um, broken windows policies, whether they unfairly target uh, African Americans. There, I, I, I'm from a community much like Ferguson um, called Anacostia in, in Ward 8 in Washington, D.C. We call it mega community Ward 8. There, not too long ago, there was a young man who was running from the police who was chased down in a car by the police and was shot in the back by the police. So this is one of those incidences that you don't hear about. It's probably one of many incidences that you don't hear about. And not just where a black person is, is disrespected or killed by a police officer, but it happens to white people as well. I think what we need to do is start to find this common ground and build coalitions around bringing more definite justice to all Americans. You know, the backdrop here in Selma, as you can see behind us, um, racial, racial tension has been really aligned with the South for so many years, the Deep South. Do you feel like those stereotypes still exist, that the South is where most of the tension is compared to the Northeast, let's say? Good question. And I think that race, racism plays itself out differently in the South versus the North. I think in the South, people are more honest with the way that they feel. But I think that sometimes um, it plays itself out in politics in a ways that don't really make sense. For instance, you'll notice a lot of people um, in areas of the South who vote Republican, yet they're, um, and they're, they're white and they're on food stamps and they're very poor. And you would think that voting for um, Republicans would be antithetical to you know, what they are trying to accomplish or what they need. But they still vote that way. Why is that? Is it because they feel that the Republican Party supports white people? Or that they feel that the Democratic Party supports 
um, black people? I personally don't think so, and I don't look through, uh, I don't look at America through a prism of race. But let's face it, we have to, we have to understand the history of race in this country and how it plays out in everything. Now, the Republicans um, would do good in this upcoming election year to reach out to minorities, to go to Selma, to embrace the history of Republicans in, 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 in the Republican Party. I, I personally believe, and I've been an independent since I registered to vote at the age of 18, that the Republican Party um, does not reach out to African Americans because they don't feel that if they did, it would matter. I feel that the Re Democratic Party um, doesn't do anything for African Americans since the 60s or 70s, um, but yet they get the vote. And I feel that who loses in the, in the, in the long run is African Americans. It's not until vote, both parties, Republicans and Democrats, have to actually do something to get their vote that you'll see African Americans really start to um, get in a better position in the political economic uh, climate of this country. Alrighty. Akili West, we really appreciate your time and your thoughts on this very important day in U.S. history. Thank you, Susan.